Talk 1380, WAOK. Call us at 404-892-2703. On News and Talk 1380, WAOK. Every once in a while, you get a chance to have a really special guest. And you're happy because their schedule is so tight, but they fit you in because they knew it was important information to get to the audience and really good stuff that we want to have here on News and Talk 1380 WAOK, especially on the Mo Ivy Show, because we talk all the time about economic empowerment. If you want to be about something, then just start doing it. That's what we talk about all the time. Stop complaining. The condition is what it is. Then let's just start doing it. And that's exactly what my next guest, John Hope Ryan, did many years ago. And we all, I'm not even going to go through the whole long bio of his. He's sat with multiple presidents. He's gotten awards from, you know, Atlanta all the way to Australia and back and forth 17 times. It's just a great story. What I just want to talk to him about is just like what happened on that page pivotal um, time period during Rodney King and um, all that looting and everything that went on that something turned on in you and you said I got to do something well first of all honored to be here you are the bomb you don't walk on water but you know where the stones are thank you thank Uh, you she's smart and (laughs) fine too okay got a job with benefits (laughs) brothers I think she's taken, so you may, you out of luck, but at least put a, put a poster oh, up and know, know what it. you're aiming for. You. Um, first of all, I'm really inspired by the operational success stories you had on this morning. I mean, you don't need me. That I want to become irrelevant. I want to become useless at my own organization because that's the story. Right. It's it, And that's what keeps me going. But let me go to, to the very good question that, that you that you asked. And I'll, by the way, I'll come by any time you like. I, this is my home now. I, I live in Atlanta. Wonderful. Is, I, people are nice at Atlanta for no economic reason. Right. <laughs> just, I know, love you, that. You go to New York yes. or L.A., I, I love oh, them. It, right. It's transactional. Yes, it you know, is. And right. I'm from New York, so I know that well, well, well. People are just nice here. So, yes. so, so look, t- 20 years ago at, at the Rodney King riots, you know, I, I really started Operation Hope out of personal guilt. Um, people you know, want to say nice things about me, and that's kind, but but that's revisionist history. The reality is, I, yeah, I grew up in the hood. I grew up in South Central, grew up in Compton. Don't get that twisted. Don't let the suit fool you. Yeah. Uh, Mom and dad grew up in Alabama, had an eighth-grade education. Don't think that this was some Ivy League. In, Well-funded, you know, that's right. right. And, um, but mom, mom told me she loved me every day of my life. Oh. So I never had a self-esteem How problem. How important was that? So incre- Well, my mother, Juanita Smith, uh, she had a nursery uh, business so that she could take care of, so she could spend time with me as, as a child. Then she went and left a great job as a fabricator, fabricator at what was then McDonnell Douglas Aircraft, now uh, uh, Boeing Aircraft. She left that job to become a janitor at my school. So she could be close to you so every day. So she could be close to me. And, you know, janitors are not perceptually the right. most prominent job in sure. the school. She didn't care about all that. She didn't care about how it looked. She had to watch her baby. I'm with my, she's, I'm with my son. Mm. So she, she really talked love into me, showed love uh, on me, showered love with me uh, my life. So when I say there's a difference between being broke and being poor, that being broke is economic, but being mm. poor as a disabling frame of mind mm. and a depressed condition of your spirit, and mm. you must vow never to be poor again, I'm not talking philosophically. I'm talking about my life. Mm. Uh, when I say that capital comes from the Latin word, root word capitas, knowledge in the head, that's where it comes from. Mm-hmm. We keep obsessing about money, for the capital, but real capital is in your head and in your heart. Because if I don't like me, I'm not going to like you. That's right. If I don't feel good about me, I'm not going to feel good about you. If I, if I don't have a purpose in my life, I'll make your life a living hell. So my mom told me she loved me. My dad owned his own business for 54 years. Good news is that that was the early image. Bad news is that we were financially, my dad was financially illiterate. So we built all this stuff up and we lost it. Wow. So that was an early image. We divorced, they divorced over money. Number one cause for divorce in America's money. Did you know when when <coughs> there was the money and then there wasn't the money that there wasn't the money because of bad management and because of the lack of capital? Did you know that? No. The other great thing my mother did and dad didn't do is they didn't make their disagreement, their divorce, uh, a battleground for their children. Wow. So the children never had a clue. Mm. Uh, we when they separated, we just thought we had two two homes. I'm wow. like, oh, cool. Right. Now I can lie to both of my parents <laughs> <in> the way we. <laughs> <laughs> and right. so th- it, it, all we got was love and encouragement and. Support 
support. Wow. They kept their battles uh, between to them. Themselves. So fast forward, I was an entrepreneur at 10 years of age because I saw my father be one. It was role modeling, okay? So fast forward now to 18, I'm homeless for six months of my life uh, because I believe too much of my own press. Whatever goes around comes around. And you had some business success. When the riots happened, I didn't think racism existed. I said all that to say, because I grew up in the hood and had that experience, I thought I understood poverty. And it took a friend of mine to say, John, not everybody's a John Bryan and not giving you a compliment. Your mom and your dad is a rare American experience, mm. not a rare black experience, mm. and you should not be blaming poverty on the poor. It's mm. not a child's fault if their dad's missing in action and their mother's working two jobs and is not around. So when the Rodney King riots happened, I didn't think they were going to happen because I thought the officers were going to be convicted because mm -hmm. this is America. Right. And so when that didn't happen, Mo, it shook my world. And I felt guilty for blaming poverty on the poor. I felt guilty for giving up effectively on my own people, mm. blaming their circumstances on themselves. Mm. <laughs> and I decided I had to do something about it. And that's why in my book, Love Leadership, the, my favorite chapter, Mo, is Lost Creates Leaders. Mm. Uh, that nobody woke up in the morning and said, I want to start a cancer foundation. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. The people who start cancer foundations are people whose lives have been impacted Affected by cancer. By cancer. Right. Rainbows after storms, loss creates leaders. This is why I love our people so much. We are natural hustlers. We've been doing so much with so little for so long, we can almost do anything with nothing. We are we, we around it, through it, to it, we're going to get to it. And, and so we are born, on, we are natural entrepreneurs, but, we, but we've never been given the entrepreneurial skill set, the talent, the capital, the belief. And versus going out and looking somebody to give us a job, we ha it never dawned on us we can create our own For job. Sure. So I, I guess what I'm saying is that different things motivate different people. I think passion is emotion made intelligent and properly focused. I think courage is when your faith reaches through your fear mm. and displays itself as action. I had both on that day after Rodney King riots. Uh, I had passion, which was my emotion and my frustration made intelligent. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to go out there and riot on the streets. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to tear up somebody's property. Mm -hmm. But I was still frustrated with myself and with my community, mm -hmm. with mainstream community, not investing in my community. But I didn't want to get mad. I wanted to get even. <laughs> so I wanted to figure out how capitalism and free enterprise worked, unpack it, mm. and repack it with our people in mind. And, and that passion combined with a little courage, again, all that is is your faith reaching through your fear, because mm -hmm. I had fe many fears, mm -hmm. displaying itself as action. And, and I moved with this mission. Everybody laughed at me. I was 26 years old. Wrote me off, said it would never work. And, you know, I look at these success stories to my left here. So, today, and, so yeah. it was born out of that, those two things meeting together, the drive to walk through the fear and to begin um, dedicating your life to financial empowerment and literacy and economic empowerment for the uh, underserved communities. And when we, I know we have to go. I'm never going to want to take a break, Dewey, by the way. But, um, but so but, we're going to have to. But, Mo, no, uh, let me clarify. No, it was driven by my sense that this was the next movement for our people. Wow. Okay, and when we come back, we're going to talk about then what was the very next thing you did to make Operation Hope begin and how that started into the, you know, the, the integral part of the community of the world that this organization has become and how you've been able to just transform it into something that is global and changing for so many people. And I know you want to also share with us this exciting thing that you have coming up. So uh, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're talking to John Hope Ryan from Operation Hope. It's just a wonderful day here at the Mo Ivory Show. And we also have the two winners of a contest that I um judged a couple of weeks back at an Operation Hope event. That's Sophie and Taryn who talked about their businesses. And it's just really, you know, it's the it's the big old um, company and it's the well-funded operation reaching right down to two regular people who have a business who are getting ready to get out there in the world and make a life for their families. And that's what it's really all about. It's News and Talk 1380 WAOK. It's Mo Ivory 404-892-2703 to join the conversation. We'll be right back. Struggling to find the perfect Mother's Day gift this year? CBS Local Offers has got you covered with a $200 Restaurant.com gift card for only $30.